It is now about 5.30 in the evening on a Tuesday, the day after Liberty, but this video we're going to put up right now is going to be covering addition and subtraction of integers. Had a little problem saying add in there. Now, we talked about absolute value in our last little video and last little bit of class. We've been working on multiplication and division with integers in the last class. But now we're going to go back to adding and subtracting integers. And you may be thinking, hey, why do we go with the multiplication and division? And then we're going back to adding and subtracting integers. Multiplication and division integers, in my opinion, actually easier because there's some really set rules that are really, really easy to follow, really concrete. A negative times a negative equals a positive, a positive times a negative equals a negative, a positive and positive is a positive. Those rules I had you guys write down. Now, that's not that big a deal. When you add and subtract numbers, I like to think of stuff like money or borrowing money or having debt. Um, and it's kind of easy to keep it straightforward that way. Let's give you a couple examples. For example, let's say I've got, you know, 3 plus 2 equals 5. Yeah, no brainer. Everybody can think about that and say, yeah, I get this, no problem, it's wrong. Well, on the other hand, let's say you take negative 3 minus 2 equals, well, here's a trick. Let's say you borrowed $3 from me. And now you borrow two more. Well, guess what? You're owing me $5. That's a negative 5. After you do a few problems like this, then what happens is you get to a problem like that, and you start to go, oh, and your brain hurts, and you work on it, and you get the wrong answer. So negative numbers can be a lot like borrowing money. You're going down to job producer with your friend, and it dawns on you, oh my gosh, I've got no money. So you borrow 10 bucks. Here's your negative 10. Um, you go back to school, you open your locker, oh look, I got five bucks. So, you pay your friend back that five dollars. And what do you owe them now? Well, you owe them still five bucks, so you have negative five. These are basic addition and subtraction of integer problems. But it's nothing really that complicated. Here's the safest way generally to think about it. If the big number has an addition sign, your answer is probably going to be positive. If the big number has a negative sign, your answer is probably going to be negative. Okay, and that's kind of a way I like to think about it a little bit in my mind. Now, there are some exceptions. One of the exceptions to the rule is the double negative rule. Now, we know that a negative times a negative equals a positive. And that actually kind of fits into this in a way using the idea of the distributive property. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later on. But let's say you have 3 minus a minus 4. Essentially, there's a couple ways to look at this. Easiest way. Memorize the fact that if it ever looks like this, it means add. Long mathematical explanation? Maybe not that long. A negative times a negative is always going to make a positive. There's that rule from your multiplication and division. In this case, it's a negative sign being distributed over another negative sign. So that means you're multiplying, okay? But if you can remember that, hey, look, there's a minus sign here, and a minus sign here, and a parentheses there. And when you have that, you put those together, it kind of looks like a plus sign. So literally, it's 3 plus 4 equals 7. So this is what we call the double negative rule, okay? Now let me actually write this down here. I'm just going to write down double negative. Okay, and I abbreviated it with NEG period, all right, so I'm double negative. If a problem looks like this, then the sign between the two changes to a positive, but only if it looks like this. That's the only time it's going to happen. So this is how addition and subtraction negatives can have a few more wrinkles into it. All right, I'm going to put a few more problems on the board, and I'm just going to go through a few and walk you through them. If you're watching this video, because you're stuck on homework, reteaching 1-7 or practice 1-7, and you're wondering about how it works, this might provide you with just a little bit of help to go over some of these. So take a quick look at some of these. Let's go with something simple like 6 minus 7. Okay, it's a minus sign, and it's 7. So the bigger number, 7, has a negative sign in front of it, so it's going to be a negative answer, which gives me negative 1. An easy way to think about this is like this. You want to buy something, um, but you know you only have so much money, so you're coming up like one dollar short. That's kind of a way it would go, all right? Um, in this instance, you're taking a larger number away from a smaller number. So if you're looking at the old-fashioned number line, a lot of 
of people will get this left to just talk about it. So zero in the middle. Okay, negative seven's over here, positive six is up here. The distance between the two, okay, is pretty substantial. But if I'm taking a seven away from a six, there's only a difference of one. That's all there is to it. But because that minus sign is attached to that, it's going to be a negative one. I know, some of you are going, whoa, Mr. Roman, I'm even more confused now than I was before. Don't worry about it. It actually does get easier the more you practice with it, the more you play with it. I will say that in pre-algebra and algebra, you're going to see lots of negative numbers, integers, and they're going to come back around again and again. Let's stick with the red marker for now. So let's go with negative 4 plus 5. In this case, 5 is bigger and it's positive, and the 4 is negative and it's smaller. So what we can always do is pretty straightforward. You can simply look at it and go, okay, bigger number positive, answer is going to be positive, so it's going to be a positive 1. Because it's like you owe somebody $4, and you oops, drop my marker, and you have a $5 bill. So by the time you finish paying them off, you only have $1 left, so you've got a positive 1 behind you. Let's try a couple more. 10 plus 2. If you get this one wrong, we got issues. Okay, yeah, 10 plus 2 is 12, okay? But some of you are thinking, no, it's negative 12, no, it's an 8, no, it's a 12, no, it's 11, oh. and see how your brain can get tricked like that? So let's say negative 6 plus negative 6. All right. You borrowed six dollars, you borrow six more dollars. Okay? Yeah, it's gonna be a negative 12. If some of you are thinking, oh, double negative rule. Nah, because remember, it has to look like this. It has to have a minus sign, then the parentheses, then a minus sign. This one has a plus sign, then the parentheses, okay? So that won't work for you. All right, let's go through a couple more problems. And you can tell it's getting a little harder to erase some of these things. Super dark in here today, man. It's super dark outside. It's crazy. It was that really hot, weird weather. All right. Smoky, cloudy, 90 plus degrees. Whew. Never thought I'd see weather like this. Okay, so let's take another look at something. Let's go with um, 3 plus a negative 10. Okay. Which number is larger? Just looking at the digits, it's going to be 10. What symbols attached to the 10? There's a negative sign attached to it. So my answer has to be negative. Okay. So if I have a negative 10 and a positive 3, yeah, I'm going to come up with a negative 7. And that's going to be your answer, negative 7. Okay. Let's go with um, a negative 4 plus 1. Yeah, it's a negative 3. Bigger number is negative. You're going to see that negative sign there, too. Okay. So let's go with 10 minus 11. Uh, negative 1, yeah. Now, I've gone through several of these problems just to kind of give you some practice with it. And you'll get more practice in class, and we'll talk about it, and I'll answer your questions, and you have some homework assignments too. It's one of these things where the more you play with it, the more you do it, the more it makes sense. But it takes a two or three go-rounds. And I'll be honest, there's some people in the sixth grade, they still have problems with this. Multiplication division, no problem with the integers. Addition and subtraction integers, still easy to get tripped up, so you've got to be cautious on these. Kind of think your way through them if you need to, all right? Go with your gut in some cases, but there are certain things you need to look for, okay? Let's say 8 minus a minus 2. Now the double negative rules come into effect. This becomes positive, so it becomes 8 plus 2. Well, 8 plus 2, as you know, I hope, is 10, and you're done, okay? All right, I'm going to stop right there and leave it like that because it's getting on close to dinner time for me. It's 5.35. I'm about to go down and cook some chow. Um, as always, if you have questions, email me, contact me, whatever you need to go on with, things like that. But please remember, take your time, look over the examples, rewatch the video if you need to. All right? Hope you all have a good night.